Setting up, the tools that you require before you start um, fitting the system are a 110 volt drill, seen here on the right, with a 15 mil concrete bit. Just to the left of that you have the 110 volt impact wrench and just above that the battery version. Um, we use the battery version for the plumbing of the brackets and the 110 volt for the fitting of the concrete bolts. Just to the left of the impact wrench we've got some 24 mil ring spanners uh, and a set of sockets that go with the impact wrench and also our small spirit level which we use for plumbing up the brackets. Other assorted tools that you'll need as with any form work are hammers, string lines, nails, screws, saws, circular saws uh, and so on. So all the tools that you need set out ready to go and we can then move on now to the setting out. Setting out the fast and easy way to set out is by setting a hilti nail in your corners um, and on the line of your shutter as we've done here and then marking out for the holes at the centres set by your drawing. So on average our centres are 600 mil apart and as we're using 2.44 metre ply the first point that we would mark is uh, at the end of the ply. But just to explain firstly we've got the string line on for the face of the shutter so as you can see from the bracket here, the hole is set a, a set distance back um, from the face of the bracket. So taking into account your 18mm ply, that means we are going to drill a hole 140mm back from the face of ply. So now we'll go to the end and mark out the end of our ply. So that will catch the ply right at the end, so the ply is sat in the middle of a bracket. And then we come back and mark at 600mm centres back towards the corner. So in all instances, when setting out and when we set out our next set of ply, just bear in mind that 2.44 metres from your joint is where your next bracket will sit and then the brackets will come at roughly 600 mil centres in between. So in reality you may end up slightly less than 600 mil and if it was a fair face finish the drawing might indicate that they're coming at 500 or even 400 mil centres. But the drawing will actually explain what you do at joints uh, and how you set joints out but this is just again really bear in mind every time you're setting out that every 2.44 meters you're going to have a ply joint and your bracket needs to be sat there all the other centers can move backwards and forwards 30 40 mil um, if required it's not really an issue uh, it's just catching the ply joints that's the main um, problem you need to overcome so now we'll move on to drilling holes Now we've drilled our first hole, we're going to jump to time lapse to show the rest of the hole. But as you can see, each hole takes only 20 to 30 seconds. Now we come to fixing down of the brackets, so as you can see we've laid all the brackets out ready to go in, we have our impact wrench ready and, and our raw bolts, so now we'll show you putting up the first couple of brackets, so simply put them over your hole, put your raw bolt in place and then tighten your impact wrench. Adjusting the brackets, um, you can see here we're using a small magnetic spirit level. Uh, the bracket, once it's loose, will go forwards and backwards, so you've got a great range of movement. So basically just put it into the plumb level. 
and we use a battery impact wrench for this and the 24mm uh, spanner. Plumb it up. Once plumbed, we go to the other end and do the opposite side. So we just plumb level. The impact wrench will stop the bracket moving. Once tightened with that, you wouldn't undo it with a by hand with a spanner. Now to plumb the rest of the brackets, we won't use a spirit level on them all. We've got both ends level, so the easiest way now is to just pull a line through, uh, which we'll now demonstrate. So now we've plumbed the two end brackets, what we're going to do is pull a string line through from one bracket to the end. This is the quick way to line up all the brackets in between. Um, saves a lot of time and you get a much better line because you're basically just lining the shutter in because you've already got two brackets that are um, already um, plumbed up. So a little trick that most joiners would already know is that you don't go to the string line um, because then you're trying to touch your brackets to the line. What we will do in, in a second is you'll see that we'll actually use a small piece of ply at either end and then we're going to use a, another piece of ply to um, measure the distance in between. So as he puts the ply on now you'll see that's actually given an 18 mil gap between the string line and the bracket and when we do the same at the other end it also gives us an 18 mil gap. That means now we can just use a piece of ply on the front of the bracket and when we push it and it's just touching the string line, we're now plumb. So commentary is now going to stop. Um, we're going to plumb, it's, it'll take, it's easier to do it with two guys. So two of us are now going to plumb up the first bracket and then we're going to jump to time lapse to show the rest of the brackets. So here we have an internal corner. So the internal corner is slightly different than an external. On an external corner, as you can see, we can actually put the brackets almost right in the corner. In fact, we could put a bracket over the corner if we like, which will make the corner nice and strong. On the inside, the feet would clash if you try and put two brackets too close together. So we have this internal corner with its own bracings, which is bolted to the floor with the same roll bolts. So in effect, it acts like its own bracket. So that whole corner now is stabilized um, and you can actually put a, a bracket 600 mil away from the corner and it would still hold and act like a bracket. But what we do is we put the two brackets in as close as the feet will allow. We usually use all of the screw holes available. Uh, in this case we've just put a few in to pin it into place. Uh, but all the pressures are against the bracket anyway so you don't have to actually use every hole when it's an internal corner. Um, although for safety reasons we generally use them all. Um, you'll notice that there's two holes in the top of the bracket as well, so if you're doing a pour that's higher, you can always put another bracket on top, another internal, and you can actually bolt it with two M16 bolts. So again, firming the corner up. Uh, we're now going to move on to putting the check light on for the concrete in. So hanging the angle fillet, the easy way to do it is one spirit levelled or laser levelled nail at either end and string a line in between as we've already done. Then we simply knock a nail in at the joint of or where every bracket is 
just under the, the uh, line, careful not to foul the line. 1 at each intersection. Simply lift the fillet underneath the nails and hammer in place. So now we're going to demonstrate the optional spacers and tie bars. I stress that on most beams uh, this is not used and it's not required. Uh, it's an extra over um, that you can put in if you need to. So firstly we'll cut a 4x2 spacer and we'll put that in between the brackets. So that will be set the size, size, of, of, size of the pour that we're going to do. We now put our tie bar through. Two one. And then simply tighten up. That will hold the top of the beam from moving outwards. So you can put that on every bracket or every other bracket or at whatever spacings you may need. Um, but as I said previously, it's an option that's not always required and is just an extra over safety. 